and there you have it. You um, every time that you enter a new thing here, this is now guiding your eye across. Um, how many of those things were we doing? What is the blueprint cost, etc., etc., etc. G'day everybody, this is Mupa Sega on behalf of Mupa Corp. Where we left off in the previous video, we had just set up this uh, conditional formatting here, where you see this kind of fade effect, and every time that we enter the value there, it does move down all to guide the eye. Um, the next part, this is going to be a much shorter video. I think these, these conditional formatting videos, um, maybe parts uh, eight and uh, nine, they will be shorter just so that we can smash this out and get you guys using the sheet. Um, the next part that we will be doing here is that once this is entered, once that is entered, we want to line up this, uh, we want to light up this row um, so that we can tell current jobs from jobs that no longer need our attention. It is going to go like this. So once that has been entered, the, the background row color here is going to look something like this. Now you can do this in row two or row one. Um, if you build it correctly in row two, then, then you can copy it across, but uh, it can get a bit confusing when we're dealing with absolute references in conditional formatting. So for this one, um, let's do it in D1. Build it in D1, um, but keep in mind as to the fact that we, we are actually using it to apply to, to um, row two. Um, so we're going to go to conditional formatting. We're gonna to go to new rule here. I'm going to go use a formula to determine which cells to format. I'm gonna bring that one up there. Go like that for you guys. Now, the conditions that we are looking for, again, this is looking for um, a, a final state or a win state or a true state. Um, so list the conditions that would make it true and thus when it sees those conditions or that uh, that group of conditions and everything in, in all those conditions are true, then it will do the format that you prescribe. Now, equals, um, if, D1, make that absolute in the column equals not blank or is not equal to blank. And um, sorry, I've missed that. We are going to also add an and in here and, and then we're going to list the conditions here, separating them by commas. Um, then we're going to go across to the finish column, um, AA make that absolute in the column. Now, if that one equals blank, then do the format that we prescribe. Now I'm quick, quickly gonna talk you through what that means. So we're saying that if there is no value in the finish column, this, so we are at the end of a job, you, you put a one in that column and you say that, that this is a job that is done. So if there is no um, value in that column, but, but we have begun entering data, i.e. there is a value in um, column D, then we want a, um, uh, a line to show up or, or some conditional formatting to show up on this entire row to, to get our I at least in that space. So the format that we're going to use there looks a bit like this. Um, let's use the top dark rich color there. Um, no fill effects here. We are just going to go with the color that we have um, set up, which is that one there. Um, the border down the bottom is going to be, again, our green, light green uh, along the bottom. The, the font color will be, again, the light green because we have the dark background. Um, I'm going to okay that. And now this is an effect. I'm going to go, I'm going to go okay press OK. And now nothing has shown up in that cell because we haven't applied it um, across the ranges that we need to. So we're going to go to manage rules, um, apply from, from, uh, from B all the way across to track. Um, all the way across the track, which is the column S. 
apply that. Okay. And now, as you can see, um, once we start entering data, that line shows up, okay? Um, these are jobs. Now, forget that these middle ones are not done, but if we actually then enter the value in the finish column, that conditional formatting goes away. So the jobs that we are not, um, the jobs that are completed that we do not need to see, they are no longer gonna show up in this lovely dark, rich um, color. Yeah, so maybe this job is done. And um, so it's gonna look like that, yeah. Um, that is that is that one. The only other conditional formatting that we are going to look at in this video, I'm going to clear all that information so that we can get back to where we were, um, like that and like that. Um, now, like this one has kind of given us this fade effect here, we are going to do that here in the race column. Actually, it's not going to be just in the race column. It's going to be E, <laughs> excuse me. It's going to be E, F, G, H, I, and um, yeah, let's go all the way into J, K, L, M, and N and O. Let's do all of them. Um, ultimately, you can remove some of these columns uh, if, if this is not how you plan to set it up. Um, Maybe you aren't going to buy from two hubs. Maybe you are going to buy from one hub. Maybe you aren't even needing componentry, in which case that's not something that you need to account for. Um, now, getting straight into it, we're going to conditional formatting again. We're going to new rule or user formula to determine which cells to format. I will show you this one here. Uh, now, I've selected E2. Um, again, uh, whatever you whatever you do sometimes sometimes you will set up a formula in e2 and then you don't go, if you go back to e2 to um, change that if you go back to e2 to change that um, uh, formatting it will actually be looking at e1 and because because you've applied it to an entire uh, column set um, now uh, so just just do as I say and not as I, I do in this instance maybe um, so you're going to go equals if, um, so the true state that we are looking for, the, the condition that we are looking for is that if there is no value here, but there is a value in the column beside it, then that's the one that we need to, to show up as, as, as like a, a guide, right? Because we are going to fill this sheet out left to right. So I'm going um, uh, format, oh no, 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 format. Um, the condition is that if D2, these are not absolute references, so just, just a clean D2 because because this is something that we are going to copy across and going to reference across. They will always be looking one cell to the left. Um, so we're gonna set up that initial um, reference correctly without any absolute references there. So if D2 equals, or sorry, if D2 is not equal to blank and and uh, E2 not absolute is equal to blank. Um, I'm going to put this within, a, within an and because we are looking for two conditions here. Now you could add as many conditions as you want into an AND function. You could say, if these five things are the case, then do this thing. Um, now, oh, whoa, whoa, I'm very sorry. That's my Bluetooth thing going up. Um, um, so the format that we are looking for in this instance is going to be similar to the fade effect. We want it to go from a nice vibrant green to whatever that background color is. Okay, um, so we're going to go to fill, fill effects, uh, select your background color, which in this instance will be this dark gray. Um, and then you're going to get a nice green, I don't know, maybe something like that. Um, and you're going to go from, well, I mean, you can go whichever way you like, but I'm going to go vertical. I'm going to go vertical and then that one in the uh, top right hand corner. Um, okay. Well, so long as it's green to gray. Um, the border on the bottom, 
because it is going to overlap. Now I'm not sure, it should actually keep whatever the border is underneath. So don't worry about actually changing that, uh, adding a border effect, just the fill effect will be enough. I'm going to go, okay, that is ready to go. Um, I'm going to go, okay. And as you can see there, uh, it has brought up this 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 greeny color, and um, once there is no value in there, it's not going to exist, right? Uh, once I fill that out, it's going to go there. Now, what we want now is that when we enter that one as well, we want it to to guide us to the next step of that process. So, um, because we've set up that formula correctly with correct. Um, absolute references or not absolute in this case i'm right to select that rule which is that one there go to applies to um remove that or just double click and then you're going to apply that across from e all the way to s actually no 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 not to s just e to o so e to o because those other columns are going to be hidden i'm going to apply that like that um and there you have it, You um, every time that you enter a new thing here, this is now guiding your eye across. Um, how many of those things were we doing? What is the blueprint cost, etc., etc., etc. Now, in terms of design, I'm, I'm not a designer, I'm just a, a, a nerd that sits here having fun making spreadsheets. But I don't like that this screen is quite vibrant and this screen here is this dark, dark, um, dark green so <laughs> if I was changing that I would either probably try and get some some consistency across there and you can do that by going like you can play around with this stuff by going back up there go to your rules manage rule and maybe you didn't like that color maybe you go to the format and and your fill effects rather than doing the light green maybe maybe you want to go completely left field and maybe you want to have a, um, a yellow, you know, maybe you want to have a yellow highlight to really accentuate that, you know? So it can be that, it can be whatever you want it to be. Um, play around with the coloring. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this has been a, a nice short video, short of rambling also. Uh, thank you for joining me. I will see you in part nine. Ciao. Move out.